everybody, I'm Chad Eckert. That isn't Eric Martins. You are watching the Fantasy Golf Pod. Follow us on Twitter at Fantasy Golf Pod. Tonight, we have another returning guest. The future of fantasy himself. Josh Kolf. How you doing? Hey, man. Good to, good to be here. Cheers. Yeah. Nice. Are you, uh, have you been drinking a lot more in quarantine than you normally do? Like, yeah, I think so. Like, I was, I'm not really a big drinker, like, over, since I had kids, but uh, I think I've had more than usual yeah. under quarantine, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like, uh, well, uh, what day is it? I don't even know what day. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It is actually Monday, April 13th. We're in the midst of Minnesota week. I just produced a pod with the Moose from Fantasy National Golf Club. And then I talked to Fantasy Insider Zachary Turcott, half the duo there. He's going to be pro- – I'm going to do that publish on Wednesday. This will be Friday. You'll see it. Today's Monday, though. Anyway, we got Josh Cole. He's back. He's been on before. You were on for the 3M Open because you know why? That's our home state. The Minnesota yeah. State – PGA, ch- I think it is. Are they going to cancel the 3M Open because of the new schedule? Do you think we're going to get screwed? I mean, that's a good question. Uh, I'm I'm pretty optimistic though. Uh, okay. I mean, I I saw some stuff from the tournament director, and uh, he was he was thinking it's good to go. Uh, oh yeah, they're like we're planning on having it. Yeah, he's like the tour told them to plan as if they have spectators, which is more than they've said for some of the other events. Cool. Yeah. So. Now, Minnesota. Okay. Minnesota week. Where are you exactly? You're up near the, are you near Hazeltine or are you, where are you closer <laughs> to uh, TPC uh, Blaine or Twin Cities, whatever they call it, or are you closer to Hazeltine? Where are you? You're in Rapids, I'm like, right? Right, I'm like right in between those two. So uh, Northwest, uh, right next to Maple Grove. Uh, so it's uh, Rogers. I'm about 30 minutes from TPC Twin Cities and 35 minutes from Hazeltine, so. Okay, but, well, you're also, I know, a Midwestern born and raised. You're from, you're not originally from Minnesota, so you can't claim it. You're the, originally from Iowa, is it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, born and raised in Iowa. Moved to North Dakota after college, then Denver. Now I'm here in Minnesota, so. What brings you to Minnesota? Is it the fantasy golf scene? Because it's, <laughs> so yeah. illustrious here in Minnesota, or why are you here? It's the thing to do in Minnesota. If you do fantasy golf, you got to be in Minnesota. So weird. That's why I came back. Of course. And the wife's from here, so. Oh yeah, that might have that might have had something to do with it. And then now, okay, we've we've asked people what has brought them to the fantasy golf world, and is it what you've always done, or is it what you've always wanted to do? Or do you do this full time? Let's tell us a little bit more about Josh Call the Future of Fantasy. Sure, yeah. I do this full time. Uh uh Rotoworld.com. I do the golf section there. And uh and then also numberball.com. I provide their PGA content. So that keeps me busy all week, uh when there's actual golf playing. But uh okay. oh, yeah. numberball. Isn't numberball yeah. relatively new as well, or is it is yeah, it even a year uh, old? It's uh, just over a year. Okay. Uh, I joined joined on just for the PGA Championship, I think, was my first week last year. So it's been less than a year for me, but it's it's really, really good stuff, really fun. They do all sports, right? They don't just do oh, yeah. golf. You you are specifically exclusively golf. D- that, that wasn't always the case, though, because you've had this website, The Future of Fantasy. You've been The Future of Fantasy. I've known about you forever. You've done this forever. <laughs> so what, what, why? Why The Future of Fantasy? How? Where did this start? Wasn't it with baseball or something I care about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, it was baseball. I was super into, like, prospects. And uh, so kind of the original thing was we started in college, and uh, me and a couple of buddies, and – I was all about the baseball prospects. So it was like the future of fantasy. I was just going to be grading prospects and, you know, writing them up and be like, this is who the one I remember is uh, Gio Gonzalez. I, I would do like player comps and it was like, for whatever reason, I, 
I had Gio Gonzalez being the next Barry Zito. Like, I don't, <laughs> I have no idea how that happened, but. Uh, Is he, did he turn out to be okay? I mean, he, he had some good years, but I kind of stopped following baseball. I don't know how their careers would match up <laughs> at all. <laughs> right on. Well, you, now, you don't seem a lot older than me. I was born in 85. Now, are you, you're mid thirties too? Is that? Like, yeah, so, yeah. 80, what, I was born in '87, so we're like the okay, same. Okay, so you're basically been doing this since like as soon as the computer started, like I basically as soon as the internet started. You've always done fantasy. Did it start like in your basement with your neighbors and doing fantasy football drafts? Where, like, can you go back to the original sure. idea of doing this, or like, or is it sure, like, the, how, why, why the origin story? I uh, <laughs> I got into it in high school. Just it was just with my buddies, you know, like normal. And uh, I would always be the commissioner of the leagues. So then, <laughs> so then I would uh, I would do like power rankings after after the draft, and I would like write about everyone's team because I was super interested in like to see how everyone else like drafted and stuff. So I would I would, usually they're like short little blurbs about everyone's team, but that kind of got me started in the content creation because it's like you know grading people, I don't know, writing stuff up, just sure. snowball, snowballed. And but. even just typing the person's name and then knowing how to spell the name and doing that a hundred <laughs> times, you're like, well, yeah. that's half the battle. Is pretending yeah, exactly. like you know what you're doing and that you didn't yeah. make yourself look like a fool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The future of fantasy, though, I think we talked about this the last time you were on our pod, is that you just kind of like, oh, this was the future of fantasy. But is the future now, though? Is the PGH... Two is this the future PGA? For me, I think we're in about the infancy of fantasy golf. I think it's the very start. We have a lot of growth, a lot of potential. Where, where do you see this industry? Do you think, where are we? Are we in a bright spot? Are we ready to like explode? Is this going to be the next thing? It's, it's hard to talk about bright spots in there when they're – <laughs> under quarantine for the coronavirus. Well, just, yeah, just pretend but like everything. Besides fine. that, besides that, I think it's uh, booming it. Like between fantasy golf and sports betting on on golf betting, I think it's gonna explode more than it already has. And uh, you know, like, you are you listen, privy to the number ball numbers? Do you see like, oh, oh yeah, this year we were having a lot of more active users in PGA stuff on the website. Do they have that or do they think that? Because I feel like yeah. this is like early 90s fantasy football where, I mean, this is no, not a lot of people are doing this like first. Like they go fantasy football, maybe then maybe basketball. But I think fantasy golf, like it is prime to take off because it is fun. You get that four day sweat. We know about this. This is why we love it. Why did you choose though to go exclusively into fantasy golf? Also? I, uh, that's a good question. I mean, I don't, I think I'm, um, really attracted to the niche sports, the niche fantasy sports. So anything that people have less information about is what draws me. Uh, I mean, I, I like, I like the NHL fantasy NHL and I like, uh, okay. I, I've, I've dabbled in the league of legends stuff just cause it's like an interesting, oh, yeah. Pu yeah, it's like an interesting puzzle to try to figure out. So like, uh, I think that's what drew me to golf originally because Back when I started, you know, you had to calculate, I had to calculate strokes gained T to green by myself because it was like, I don't know if you were playing back then, but it was like, they gave you strokes gained putting, Mark Brody, he had come up with that, but he hadn't started publishing the T to green stuff. So there's no off the T approach around the green. So I had to, you had to get the strokes gained total and just subtract the putting so you could get the T to green. So it's come a long way. Okay, so you're are you still into stats or do you do the website anymore or what do you do you do futurefantasy.com? Yeah, so the futurefantasy.com it's it kind of moved over to Numberball uh, when I joined them. So that's where I on Mondays I'll do all my uh, I'll do my course preview there with all the quotes and uh, uh, So that's your thing kind of. You're like the quote guy and the correlated course guy. So if you want not just numbers, not just straight stats and what a model spits out you do kind of dig into the psyche of the golfer have you found that valuable looking into what golfers say about specific tournaments or courses or grass types have you found that valuable or lead you to answers yeah like it, it started when i was you know looking at quotes you see all these people talking about oh bermuda 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 
you know, I, I can't wait to get back on Bermuda. Dude, you and, see us posting these inter- interview snippets. Like, they do yeah. reveal things. Like, they're kind of honest, you feel like. Yes. So when I saw that, I started tracking everything. And, you know, originally I kind of just went with it and just revealed, like, published everything I was tracking without uh, kind of back testing it. Okay. But over the last few years, I've had time to test it. And, like, so now I just only – I only look at the things that I – have seen work and that's grass type grass type for sure uh you get i mean it's never going to be like oh the best person on bermuda is going to win every time obviously that's not how golf works but there are definitely uh a little bit of uh edges here and there if you're looking at the splits like that what about correlated courses is the same thing could you find value in looking at courses where the same finishers do well at different you know events so you kind of know, wow, if they do well here, they're going to do well here. Does it? Yeah, I think a lot. Of, yeah, I think a lot of that is picking up on uh, stuff that you would never like isolate by itself. Like certain certain tournaments that have similar weather, they might end up getting grouped into same uh, correlated bucket. Okay. Uh, when you look at how golfers overperform and underperform. You know, you'd be like, oh, why are these two events correlated? Like, but then, like, you look at, oh, the average temperature at both is, like, 71 degrees and, like, 14 miles per hour wind. And it's like, oh, there might be something to that. That, like, you wouldn't isolate that by itself and be like, these are, do this because of this. But, uh, yeah. Okay, well, you have – done this a long time you know kind of what you're doing or you feel like you have edges or hedges or where to get things to find answers have you found answers have you reached the the glory of a mega profit have you done anything where you have a worthy story of like just any worthy story of betting or dfs yeah i think i think uh the most interesting one is how i got how i get it's kind of how i got into fantasy golf i guess uh there was First, I was playing Yahoo Golf, Yahoo Fantasy Golf, which there's no real prizes there. But then this, like, kind of sketchy site, Fantasy Golf Tour, came out. And it was, like, I started playing there. It was, like, $25 entry. And they started they started having these huge prize pools, like, way before, like, DraftKings was a thing. Or I guess maybe a year or two before DraftKings Golf was a thing. So uh, that was, like, my first nice score there. Uh, I won – it was the 2000 – 15 or 16 travelers. So DraftKings was a thing. So DraftKings was a thing, but they were like, I don't know, in the infancy, I guess. And uh, all I remember is Graham Dillette was on the team. Uh, so he was like my favorite golfer for a long time. Cause it was like, okay. it was like $6,000 win. And I was like, Oh, oh wow. Off, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. It $25. Okay. And it was like, back then it was like DraftKings prizes were good, but it was like similar. No, they weren't trying to, give you a million bucks and draft no so that's kind of how i was like okay i should do this golf thing more so all right now do you so you have you had graham delette as your guy for a minute do you have a brand play that you go to who's your like go-to guy that you're always like my heart but i don't know (laughs) i mean it's really yeah i mean i think as far as brand guys um what about hv3 i mean you're rocking his shirt (laughs) <laughs> no i actually never play hv3 for whatever reason <laughs> but, well uh, i like wolf now are you a good wolf guy because you won our open 3m open no i'm not a wolf guy i mean okay. it's really it's really uh easy to do but i just rory is my guy even when he was going through this, a little bit of struggles and even even now like just his personality i feel like it really He's, he's kind of my guy. He's like very into stoicism and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I, I oh, don't yeah. know. He's so poised to be the yeah. next one. He's like, no one. <laughs> yeah. as soon as Tiger's done, he's going to carry it for the next 10 years. Uh, let's talk about your process. You are a DFS player since you at least provide the insight for it. Uh, we talked the last time and you only make a couple lineups a week because you want to focus. You want to get real serious about those lineups. Has that changed? Are you still into that same process? Yeah, I'm, I'm still, uh, my core, core plays are still uh, three, three, uh, three entry max contest GPPs. 
because I feel like those are, you know, when you look at contest selection, I try to minimize the amount of exposure I have to the, you know, anything over 10,000 entries. Okay. So when I, so the three entries, three entry max are usually perfect for that because you can get like, you know, a uh, $20 three entry max, there might be like 6,000 6, entries or something in it. And you just have a lot better chance to, to increase your RI when you're playing those events. So that's, uh, that's where I focus on. Okay. If you, so you create three lineups, let's say on those lineups, are you using the same guy on all three lineups? Typically, are you going like 18 total people and nobody's the mm -hmm. same? Have you got some overlap? How do you create a player pool for just three teams? Yeah, I never do 100% on one guy. Uh, uh, I do mm, maybe two or three people uh, will overlap on two lineups. Uh, so I don't, I don't really get specific with, like, I only play this number of people or whatever, but, uh, you know, I don't over overlap, uh, more than, more than three guys probably out of those three lineups. Are you worried typically about a person's ownership percentage? Are you worried about the projected ownership, a chalky name? Do you typically fade chalk or do you eat chalk? Does it even bother oh, yeah. you? Well, I mean, ownership is huge. Like in golf and I guess other sports too, but I feel like in golf, there's so much variance that, uh, I mean, you could just use like Vegas odds. And if you factor in the ownership the right way, you can be a profitable player. Like the difference between like a perfect ranking or like a really good ranking system and just going down Vegas odds, they're not going to be major differences. So like, I feel like, you just got to find out where the field is and kind of uh, work around that. But I, I won't fade, you know, if Rory's projected 25% ownership, I'm not going to fade that okay. just because it depends on the player. But if like Billy Horschel's projected 25% ownership, <laughs> what was that your guy? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then, then you start to fade that. What about like the 6,500 Max Homa coming off two great tournaments and DraftKings hasn't caught up yet? Do you feel like you have you can eat that chalk or could do you fade that still? I, I'm usually always fading that kind of play. Uh, okay. I mean, yeah. What about yeah, betting? Do you bet at all? Are you a better? No, I don't really get into the betting side of things. Stick to the DFS. I mean, yeah. I guess that's betting, but I don't do the the, the matchup bets or the so your articles aren't focused on betting or odds or getting a number? No, no. You're focused on value plays, what's good for this type of course, who likes this type of course, what kind of players are hot at this point. And then you come up, each week you have a rankings, you do like a top 30, is it? Yeah, on, on Roto World I do a preview and I put, I think it's top 20 now that I do the preview. Um, and. Uh, you know, they're always going to overlap when you, when you start, I do like three articles a week on there. So there's going to be overlap between guys. If I were betting that like, obviously I'm going to mention them, you know? Okay. Now, did you, you, you still use stats a lot in your process. Do you have a go-to stat? Do you like looking at statistics and that makes a difference in who you pick? Oh yeah. I, I do look at stats. Um, if I had to do one, like I don't get deep into the like bucket stats, like oh, par fours, four hundred to four fifty. Okay. Like I don't. I just don't uh, dive that deep because usually the samples are on that are so small. Uh, but you know, if if I'm gonna focus on stats like that, I like to. I mean, you just had Moose on. Uh, the stats I use most are like. Uh, his percentage stats. Uh, okay. He added that one as a request. I, I I want I really wanted him to add that, so I use it. So all explain the time. that on Moose's site, Fantasy National, you can sort by percent round. Yeah. How many rounds they get that statistic, and they're the top percent of that statistic. So you use that. You like that metric. Oh yeah, that's that's what I use all the time. It's like, uh, it it's like the percentage of rounds that they gain in that area. So if you look at strokes gain T to green, 
and someone's gaining strokes in that 75% of the time, that's, that's solid. Like it's kind of a measure of consistency over just, uh, you know, one or two good rounds kind of ballooning things. So you're taking the outliers out a little bit by using the percentage on there instead of saying like he could have had an amazing round two, but was crappy on three, one and four. And then he looks good, but he's only 25%. Yeah, it's, also, it's also interesting just to look at those like by category. Cause it's like, you look at putting, you start to, I, I really like to look at it for putting cause it's like, Oh, some guys like lose strokes more than 60% of the rounds. <laughs> But they are statistically good putters because they, like, hopped a couple good rounds. Yeah, some of of them can look average. But, like, at the same time, I mean, I know you you guys like to say, like, go – what is it? You like to target the bad putters, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If they're bad at putting. I I told Moose to add the stat. Like, how can I sort my (laughs) bad putting? And he was like, oh, what? Yeah. I mean, I think people – I'm not trying to throw you in a bus here, but I think people get carried away with that. And it's like, Oh, right. To a, like, to, to a, we, you know, we do things to, for content purposes. Yeah, no. Yeah. But I mean, like people are always looking for the hot putting round, but it's like, if you look at the percentage of rounds they gain, it's like, if you're going after, uh, you know, those low end, they gain 40% of the time, it's not likely that you're going to catch that, that lightning in a bottle, you know? Right. So you're quarantined like me in Minnesota, mid thirties with you, you got your job still, I guess. Right. Technically. Yeah. A, li- a little bit. Yeah. Are you <laughs> writing about drastic, LOL yet? Drastically reduced job. Yeah. Um, and you have a chill, you have one child or two, two, ch- two children, two daughters, okay. one, six okay. months, one's about to turn three. Okay. Yep. See, I got the three and the four month yeah. old. So like we're like right in line with each other. So Dang. what are you doing? Are you got do you have Disney Plus all day over there? <laughs> yeah, we had to buy an iPad. We we never had any of that. So. Uh, oh yeah, the iPad is key, dude. Keys I know to it's, survival. It's huge. Oh. It's been crazy. Like, <laughs> oh, so the key much though respect. is to keep the iPad at like twenty percent battery or a little less, like fifteen percent battery, because then you give it to them, and by the time that you know you've even forgotten that they've had it. It runs out of battery Ooh, and then smart. they're coming to complain to you and you're like, Oh, sorry. <laughs> Gotta go do something now. Yeah, so the key is pretty smart. Yeah. yeah I've, I've been trying to do like timers kind of like, cause then she gets into it and she's like, Oh, set a timer. Oh, better go. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. um, there was a golf game. I got, I got my son hooked up on. It. <laughs> so I'm trying to brainwash him subliminally. Uh, yeah. Are you, have you watched any of the rewatch? Well, we just got through the master's weekend. Um, did you watch any of the Masters rewind? I didn't, no. Oh. No, it's sad stuff. Can't. I, I can't got be, into the 86 like with nothing. Jack, and then I got into the Tiger in 97, and I watched Phil a little bit. I was into it for, you know, passively. Yeah, yeah. And it makes me I sad. Just, yeah, I just wasn't watching this weekend, so. What about your predictions on things? Are we coming back mid-July, or are they coming back earlier? Yeah, I mean, I think – I think we'll know if shortly, but uh, I mean, late June, early July, I would say. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, that holds true. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. He has never known. I'm optimistic. I'm not one of those pessimists. Like. Oh, Martin. I've been very optimistic. Probably too optimistic for some people's liking since the beginning. So. Yeah. Uh, well, what are you gonna do then? In the meantime, are you just gonna hang out, bunker, bunker down, and survive? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, trying to do you know do daycare now. I well, it freaking snowed today, so it's not like we can't go golf or anything. Yeah, I think I I think I picked up like six shots off my handicap in the quarantine because <laughs> I have these birdie balls. You know what birdie bar- balls are? No, what's that? They're like little plastic tubes, like okay, and you can hit them in your yard. So like I hit oh. them in my yard. They they like fly. They're supposed to fly like ball flight, like a real golf ball. Okay, but they only go like. 50 yards so okay. so i've been hitting that and i feel like you know i found it found my game nice so I'm, i gotta I'm buy some of these it. are they on amazon <laughs> i don't know i want them in a giveaway a long time ago so oh nice okay birdie but, balls I, birdie ball i never used them until recently now oh, sweet now i try to get out there all the time well you're the future of birdie balls <laughs> yeah <laughs> no josh call 
the future of fantasy on Twitter. Go follow him. He's at number ball. He's doing things. As soon as the season gets back going again, you can get his advice every week. He's got an article about power rank. He's got an article about correlated courses. He's got an article about people saying things about the specific course <laughs> in the grass. It's beautiful. I read it every week. It provides insight for my picks and clicks. So thank you, Josh. Thank you for coming on again. We appreciate you. You got it. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, take it easy, dude. Peace.